That's right. It's Lucky Episode 7 for US FA PN. Let's, Let's go. go. That's right. It's been a big week uh, in the uh, USFA. That a will big be week. Extra big. So big. We were able to fit it all into this episode. And uh, let's uh, dive right in and talk about our first game. We've got Dallas versus Charlotte. All right. Big episode starts with playing in the D. The other D. Dallas. About to have the ball. DJ Church, quarterback, takes a snap, holds it, and look at this. Oh, oh big defensive play here. Big sack. Big sack that went on for the second play. Uh, look at this. The field glows in the dark. Charlotte hurls the ball. Oh. Kai Coco. That's a reception. Pretty long one, if I might say. Very defensive game, but a couple of big plays. A couple of big plays. All right. And third, we've got to uh, check this one out. Uh, it's actually fast forward through this. Oh, it's another sack. Don't fast forward through the sack, dude. All right, all right. Well, check out this positioning from the, uh, you know, the 30-yard line. Is this seriously a punt? Check this punt out, though. Wow. Oh! Pins it at the, the one? Wow, oh, that was uninspiring. That was crazy. Jake Molyneux with the punt. All right, so... I would have rather seen a score. Well, let's see that come through. On our fourth play, What's getting the shotgun? it's uh, Dallas has the ball. And the seal the deal here. Hands it to Ulf Jacobson. Oh, my goodness. A run. And a timeout was called. That helps him run out the clock. Yes, it did. But you know what ran out in that game? Um, that was Dallas's first win. That was, uh, yeah. Improved to one and three. Charlotte also one and three. The Royals coming off a strong season last season, if I remember correctly. Obviously not able to replicate that success this year. Yes. Overall, a very uh, defensive-led game. Lots of sacks, you know, seven to six. Um, and surprisingly, those points were both put down by both teams in the second quarter. No other quarter contained any offensive movement. A um, lot of low numbers here. Uh, from an offensive production, but you can see a lot of utility, um, 13 first downs uh, comparative to the passing and rushing yards. You know, that's, I don't know, 13 to 17%. Yeah, and you got to know, Ulf Jacobson is always going to get it done on the ground. You don't, you don't want a blood feud with Ulf Jacobson. Sorry, Charlotte. Yeah, sorry, Charlotte. Well, let's move along to our next game. We've got Arizona versus Pittsburgh. The baby rattlers. Or the rattler snakes. Well, let's, oh, what a, you know, nice field we got oh, what here. what a beautiful day. Pittsburgh has the ball. Okay. 30-yard line. Playing against the Easter egg hunt on the other end of the field. Oh! oh right up the middle. Nice. That was too bodacious. Uh, nice. Uh, I love that end zone graphic that they have uh, painted across there. Like the, like the skyline and the cursive writing under it or whatever the fuck that is. Very sick. Very sick. Yeah, well-designed field. Well, let's see about how uh, Arizona performs. Now they've got the ball. And uh, yeah, Pittsburgh keeping it close for a little bit, but... Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at this. Take that out of your east of basket. <sighs> Touchdown. That was Sean McGowan uh, on Arizona. And uh, not the first play we've got of him. Just check out this one coming up there at the 15-yard uh, line. Oh! Yeah, it's interesting. Going into this game, it looked like a couple of one-win teams just playing against each other in a toilet bowl of sorts. But after seeing Arizona rattle off all these points, you got to wonder, where will they be in the postseason? Where will they be in the postseason? But we know at least uh, moving out, they were up 34 and still had another opportunity. Wow. And uh, are those uniform uniforms pink or light purple? I don't know. What do you wow. think? I don't know. I think they play better than they look. Play better than they look. Well, let's see if that might be determined in an upcoming special. 
Um, these were nice maneuvers by Arizona overall, who finished the game um, 41 above 14. <laughs> Dominating yeah. the second and third quarters with 21 and 13 points to That's zero. That's a huge blowout. And if somebody out there can do the math and tell us how many points Pittsburgh lost by, put it in our comments and subscribe. And subscribe. Well, you know, coming up, we've got our third game, which was St. Louis against Anchorage. Ooh. Anchorage, my personal favorite team. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, good luck with this game then. Uh, uh, we know St. Louis, they the gritty city and they play like it. Oh my God. Well, we're starting off the highlights and we St. Louis is already up seven. That's what we expect. Look at them. Damn, they look like fucking like greatest show on turf. Early 2000s St. Louis Rams. Kurt Warner shit. Well, that was Kevin Lee with the TD. And uh, let's see who came up, you know, next. That's a good standoff. Uh, looks like every week we're talking about St. Louis. So who did, they, who did they lose to? Was it Charlotte? Uh, misremembering? Might have been. I got to check the tattoos on my stomach like I'm in Mento. <laughs> well, this one left a post-it note right into the end zone. Oh, nice. With Ansel Tavian stuck to it real quick. Um, Ansel Tavian? Yeah. What is his name? Ansel Tavian. Where do you see that? Or can you spell that for me? A N S E L T A V I A N. Ansel. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, in our third play, um, there we've got a perspective on the Anchorage coach. Um, another one with uh, St. Louis on the 40 yard line. Who are the St. Louis mascots again? The archers. Archers? That is some... There is no archer oh. involved there. That looks like a mud demon. It's just because they're at Anchorage. Wow. They're at Anchorage. Oh, that's the Anchorage. Yeah. What, who are the Anchorage? Uh, yeah. so I thought they they're were... the snow devils. Oh, the snow devils. Nice. Snow devils, yes. Should have been the... Snow devils. Yeah. Well, now we've... And that was Kevin Lee with the TD on the, the previous Ooh, play. in Allegiant Stadium. But if you missed that one, don't worry, because uh, you got another one right here. Perfect. Imagine that coverage around him. Wow. Like an extra pair of hands that were against you, and he fought through it and secured that with a pretty sick animation. Pretty impressive to, say, to see St. Louis like this on the road. Well, and it wasn't just the offense that uh, came together, you know, uh, in our final play of the St. Louis, uh, looks like we've got a perspective here on a previous running play or a passing play. Um, but check this one out. Anchorage about to get the ball. Yeah. Anchorage, do something with it. Oh, that's tough. Dane Jones uh, of Anchorage sacked. Uh, I thought they would have gotten a little something with the game, but. That's, just, That's the math I can do. 31-point loss. Sorry, Anchorage. Yeah, 31-point loss. Guess I'm not coming out there for the next one. But let's give it to Anchorage for, you know, getting swept in the first three quarters, yet they didn't, you know, give up. They still they put... They couldn't. They had no choice. They were simulated. They put points on the board. They have no free will. I think they have a perspective competition. And if we look... It wasn't a very fair game. They had nearly uh, twice, he had more than twice as many St. Louis um, first down 17 to eight respectively. And the passing game was just substantially dominated 356 to 79. Um, I'd love to see some QBR rating without creating a brand new thing for us to work. Rebecca Montag uh, threw five touchdowns and a uh, 88% completion rate. Montagna. Montagna. Yeah, maybe, that's probably. I think maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and four of those five went to Kevin Lee. So uh, pretty impressive. Hey, Rebecca. The Rebecca to Kevin connection. Yeah. All right. So um, then we've got uh, Tampa Bay versus the New York Mafia. Uh, one of my top 10 bays. 
<laughs> look, that, that's a better one. That's a funnier one than the other one. But it's gonna be a oh, 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 I thought that that was a end around that got stuffed, but damn. No. Oh my goodness, he carried him. If only he could carry him a couple more yards. That was Giovanni Walker with the reception for the New York Mafia. Giovanni, that is a, this is great. All the fucking mafia names are yeah. fucking Italian as fuck. Yeah. Uh, all right, so next up, we've got um, Tampa Bay with the ball. Let's see what the Typhoon can do here. Um, they're at the 30 and have no. Seven point lead. Long fucking. Oh! Check that out. Oh! Well, that still so catches it. Ten yard pass. <laughs> well. I thought he was going to get sacked by Luca Brasi over there. <laughs> well, this is Brogan Sparrow. Well, okay. At least it wasn't a kick. All right. So, but we do have, you know, a final one here from 54 Tan points in that game. We just saw a ten yard pass. Pretty impressive, though. I don't know. Didn't see the feet. This team looking for man left side and going to be Here we oh. go. Oh, Travis Vaughn with the touchdown for Tampa Bay. Um, oh, nice going there. Oh, the Mafia are not going to like that. I hope that the Typhoon got police protection for their families. Uh, well, who did, you know, win this one was the Tampa Bay Typhoon 40 to 14. Um, Blowout. Another blowout. The Tampa Bay remains undefeated with a 4-0 record. Um, the Mafia fall to 2-2. Two and two. Um, 200 combined rushing yards between Jason Copeland, Jackery Dash, and James West. 70% passing game with three touchdowns. Uh, pretty impressive display here. Hard to fight the Florida. Hard to fight the Florida. So let's turn our attention um, to... Our final game of Tacoma versus Huntington Beach. Right. And we've got um, two non-major metropolitan areas squaring off in a sold-out stadium, I would assume, because I'm sure that there's no simulation where they give you garbage out. We might have to rate the fields, man. You know? Ooh, field ratings. Field ratings. Um, that was Sean Bridges of Tacoma getting sacked. I love the visor, though. Yeah, sick. Sick visor. Oh. Sick fuck. All right. Well, uh, next up, we've got a, another Tacoma play. Oh, yeah, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll. Um, this one, let's see it go down. Boone Gray Field. Shout out to our colorblind viewers out there. This, this segment is a lot easier on you than us. Yeah. Kaiser and that was a great a, score, though. Frederick Kaiser uh, with a touchdown. Kaiser. Kaiser. Um, Not going to make any jokes about that one. <laughs> I'm aligned with you. Uh, so th we've got uh, another one coming. Touchdown. This one going to, again, Frederick Kaiser. Kaiser. Wow, looks like both of his arms work fine. Perfectly fine. Yeah. All right, and last up, we've got a. Try to get the ball back late. Check this out. I'm not sure how I feel about these, like chessboard raptor slashes in the pants of Tacoma. But I gotta say, actually, I do know how I feel. About it. I fucking like them. That was Action Jackson Jr. with the deflection. Action Jackson Jr. Dad would be proud. Go wow. and uh, you know that was the final game. The Tacoma came through fourteen and nine. Uh, another game where they scored in the they didn't score in the first, but they scored in the second. Didn't score in the third, but scored in the fourth. Came through with some consistency on the outcome there. I think there may be a correlation between muted colors and parity in game scores, but we'll have to have our interns search that and get back. Yes, because in this one, there was not too much offense, a gritty defensive battle, uh, but Tacoma got the touchdowns, and Huntington Beach got field goals. And uh, I guess that sums it up. So that was episode seven of... U.S. F.A.P.A. Let's, Let's go. go.